Joel and Ethan Cohen have established themselves as a unique voice in American film with such movies as Fargo, Miller's Crossing, and Raising Arizona. Their latest, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, follows three convicts on the run from the law. It draws on such varied influences as Preston Sturgis, Hollywood musicals, and Homer's The Odyssey. Here is a look at the film. Who elected you leader of this outfit? Well, Pete, I figured it should be the one with the capacity for abstract thought. But if that ain't the consensus view, then hell, let's put it to a vote. Suits me. I'm voting for yours truly. Well, I'm voting for yours truly, too. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me now, co-writer and producer Ethan Cohen, director and co-writer Joel Cohen, and the three stars of the film, George Clooney, who plays Everett, Ulysses McGill, Tim Blake Nelson, who plays Delmar, and frequent Cohen Brothers collaborator John Turturro, who plays Pete. I am pleased to have all of them here. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me about, is this essentially from Odyssey? How did this thing come about? <laughs> well, <laughs> and how did you rope these characters in? I think we just sort of like the idea of the credit at the beginning, based upon the Odyssey by Homer. More, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That was, that's a good frame. Yeah, it was. It didn't actually start out with uh, the Odyssey. We. Uh, it started out with these three guys escaping from a chain gang, and as we sort of got further and further into the script, we realized that um, it was essentially sort of an episodic story about the main character trying to get home. So that sort of suggested the Odyssey to us, and um, and we then went out and got the classic comics version of the Odyssey because we neither of us had read it, um, and still haven't. Um, and uh, Tim actually has read it. Tim Nelson. Yeah. Oh, Tim. Well, that's because, that's because Tim went to Brown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you guys haven't read it. Nah, it's true. It's yeah. been true. But the title came from Preston Sturgis. The title came from. Sullivan's Travels, yeah. um, and in Sullivan's Travels, it's the movie that Joel McRae wants to make. Um, so this is, you know, we went ahead and made it for him. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for Joel. Yeah. <laughs> he likes it. He's thinking about it. Yeah. He's thinking about it. Oh, oh, he was there in spirit, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, tell me what he means by this title. Well, in Sullivan's Travels, he wants to make, it's, it's sort of a big, important movie about man's fit lot, you know, man's fate, and, uh, and sort of a socially conscious movie, which is why he goes on the road in the movie, but uh, um, in Sullivan's Travels. Um, but um, uh, that's kind of, his, you know, the, the, it's kind of a gag, the title of the movie. It, and it's pretty much the so it has the no reference meaning. back to, yeah, as Ethan said at one point, it's, it's, it's sort of a cheap gag, but an obscure one, which makes no sense at all. If you're going to do a cheap gag, why make it obscure? Um, uh, but that, yeah, that's where the title is from. Now, have you guys changed your ideas about making movies since Fargo at all? Since Fargo? No, not particularly. I mean, it didn't all, change anything, did it? No, uh, you know, they're all different, but in, uh, just because of specifically what they are, they're different sorts of stories. No, yeah. my Fargo didn't change much. And here you are, big, 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 big star. Huge star. Huge star. And, <laughs> huge, huge star. <laughs> and, and you get a script. Yeah. And you just say yes. Yeah, I didn't want to, but I, <laughs> they had some photographs of me, and I, I, I thought agreed so. to. That's the question. <laughs> what were they <laughs> photographs of? <laughs> no, they, they brought the script. I was in Phoenix, Arizona, working on Three Kings, and they brought the script and set it down and said, we wrote this one. If you want to do it? And I said, yeah. Is that so, right? And they go, you want to read it? And they go, well, all right, but I'll, I'll do it. Says... <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I no, read stop. it. Did he say that, actually? You yeah. drop the script on his table, and he says, I'll do it. And they say, don't you want to read it? And he says, if you insist. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if that's George's story. Yeah. <laughs> You're sticking to it. <laughs> We'd send him the script. We'd, I don't know. Yeah, we sent the script to your agent. I think the agent didn't want him to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he didn't give it to me. <laughs> Boy, no. sorry. Um, this was not. <laughs> um, but it's true. Yeah, we went down and saw you at the... At the place where you were shooting uh, yeah, the movie. Because Phoenix. you had no confidence that the agent was going to deliver for George yeah, exactly. or what? <laughs> and, uh, Let's get this agent it was in like here. A, yeah, it was like a 10-minute meeting. And uh, he said he would do it. We figured we should quit while we're ahead. Exactly. And we got out of there. Yeah. yeah. Then we had so, to go find money to get it made. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but why really did you want to do this right off? Well, I mean, these are guys you want to work with, you know. I think if you're... Uh, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't care sort of where you are in your career. If you get a chance to work with these guys once, 
Not not twice, but once. Did <laughs> 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 you get a chance? Is there you something wanna... to that, John? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're <laughs> still trying to pick yeah, no, I'm not sure. They're trying to pick the They well, still got they pictures me, of John. They have me in a lifetime contract. I'm, I'm, right. <laughs> what did they have on you at the beginning? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is there a farm animal involved? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of... It goes both ways. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, so what is it about these two guys, I'm asking you to say that in their presence, that make you want to work with them in contrast to, you know, somebody you might insist at least on reading the script? Well, I don't think you, I mean, I don't think you, you'll, you'll get to read, say, a script like this in particular, which is sort of a hillbilly musical comedy adventure very often. <laughs> hillbilly it's, musical comedy it's, adventure. It's, it sort of reinvents, a, you know, a new genre, and though I know them well, when I read it, I was like, Wow, here's another one. <laughs> so Count me in. I think it's, it's there's always a new kind of world that they create, and uh, it, it's fun to uh, to fill that imaginary world out. It's never the same. For, I mean, all their films are, are are different, though maybe there are some things people can say can associate with them, but they're very different, and each world is very specific in its own way. Mm. Tell me about your character, because we're going to see a scene with involving all of your characters. Tell me about Peter. No, Pete. Uh, Peter. Pete, 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 well, Pete. Pete was really an English Peter. guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a choreographer. He's a choreographer. He's sort of a, he's always been, I had my own story at Delmar and I were really close. And George came in and kind of ruined the whole ruined relationship. It. He ruined a bit. And, uh, <laughs> but these are things I don't usually talk to them about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did and, uh, you know this? Uh, no, no, this is the first time hearing yeah. the backstory. We have our yeah. own, we, I don't know how, you know, they just sort of, we have, they showed me a picture of a guy with bad teeth. <laughs> and you said, I got it. Said, you got to shave your head. Well, see, here's the thing. Usually with John, whenever we do a, a movie with John, he starts with his hair. So we figured we'd stitch him up on this one, and we suggested that he shave his head right. before he, he, you know, when we originally asked him to do the movie. But um, then he was a little taken aback at first, but then we showed him a picture of the character with the really bad teeth, and that got him excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, so what's Delmar like, <laughs> Tim? Uh, Delmar is a follower. He's, uh, he's just uh, honored to be uh, in the presence of two thinkers like that. <laughs> <laughs> Geniuses <laughs> who have read uh, Preston's dirt. That's right. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and I, your character. I'm the, I'm the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> That's apparent. <laughs> Which is a terrifying thought. <laughs> it's like being the world's tallest midget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see these characters in action. Here is a scene uh, from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? We got some people. Oh, boys, here. Careful with that fire now, boys! What's the message of this movie? <laughs> I don't know. When we were and, making it, it obvious. <laughs> yes, I think. And, we were calling it the Lawrence of Arabia of Hayseed movie. <laughs> I'm thinking about doing a mom pie kettle movie next. Yeah. And, are you really from this to this? Yeah, th this your character seems not to have all the qualities that leading men have. Heroic, yes. <laughs> intelligent, <Really>? brave. <laughs> it's, 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 why did they think of me? <laughs> why did they think, they think of the Phoenix? Go, we got this guy who's an idiot who only cares about his hair. And we thought of you. <laughs> Thanks, boys. I'm in. I'm your man. I'm, I'm your, your man. man. <laughs> I don't need to read the script. You've got me down. I'm in. <laughs> Can I pay you? <laughs> yeah. Well, then, it was as much fun to make this movie as it was to talk about it. Or as it is to talk no, about? Actually, it was it was a lot of fun to make this. Uh, it was you know it was a little bit hot at times. It was Mississippi in the summertime. That could be a hundred and what? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It'd get over a hundred and like ninety eight percent humidity. <laughs> but uh, you know, outside of the outside of the heat, actually, it was a good time. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty fun. It was a lot of a lot of laughing, right, Tim? That's well, right. This is your last. this is your biggest film to date, huh? In terms of. I've never had a role in a movie that's more than a couple of scenes. <laughs> so this could be big time. And uh, they just wanted or, to give themselves or, the biggest liability possible. Never work again. Out. Exactly. So they decided to pluck somebody who was completely inexperienced and give them a big role. Yeah. So, so why did you do that, guys? 
<laughs> <We're still laughs> They'd also never that. seen the act before. We'd never seen Tim. You'd act. seen Thin Red Line. Well, yeah, we had seen that. Yes, that's true. Did that them? come out then? Yeah, it had. Yeah. It had. Yeah. Um, well, well, you don't really wasn't much in that. Hello, you don't have to wait until movies come out to see these actors in them. <laughs> that's true. I mean, directors, no directors. Well, Tim, Tim's actually we've known Tim a long time. Yeah. He's a neighbor of mine. And he'd read the Odyssey. <laughs> and he'd read the Odyssey, so he was actually more qualified than the rest of us. <laughs> that's right. He was a technical advisor. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, also, actually, he was a resident intellectual for this. Yes. Film. Oh, believe me. Yeah. yeah. He actually was. <laughs> also, actually, he can sing, although we didn't know it at the time yeah. that we cast him. But that was kind of a uh, yeah, bringing up kind of a sore spot there, aren't you? Kind of hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What does that mean? Well, I... Uh, Cat's still in the bag. Uh, I was, you don't uh, have to say anything you don't want to do. George, that's right. <laughs> I'm of a family of singers. Yes, I know. A family, uh, yes. and clearly a gene... It didn't get down to was, you. It was passed. The gene pool had <laughs> been exhausted. I was skipped. <laughs> Rosemary got all the good singing. But they found that out in a recording studio so. in Mississippi. Mississippi, where I'm singing my heart out, and I look through the glass, and no one will have eye contact with me. We're all looking at our shoes. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like a kicker with no time left on the clock to win the game, and nobody will look at it. And I was like, <laughs> and they, and nothing. They, and they look the other way. Oh. How'd it go, boys? Yeah. Now, what's the music here? I mean, what is this? Well, the um, the, the song that George sings is an old um, traditional. Uh, song called American song called uh, Ma I'm a man of constant sorrow. But all the all the music in the movie is traditional American music from the 20s and 30s, and some of it from the 40s. Some, um, and it's um, it's really American roots music. It's the music that sort of is the foundation of what's now country music, rock and roll, pop music, um, gospel music, um, and blues. Let's see some and hear some of these beautiful voices in action. Roll tape. Hail to old Kentucky, the place where I was born and raised. The place where he was born and raised. <laughs> That's great, guys. That's, that's, a, that's a winner. I thought it was a fine yeah, That's a winner. That's a fine George. job. Glenn Close also did all of my lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brother, Where Art Thou opened in limited release on December 22nd, just in time for the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. Thank all of you. Pleasure to have you on Thanks, my nice. little program.